shorter count. <laughs> we're on the time schedule. Three, two. Hey, we're back. All right, Scott, you had a follow up. Yeah, so it, I thought it was really interesting. You know, you're talking about comparing cover bands and original bands and the original work. And one of the things you brought up, which was our related specifically to us, was our um, our 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 rehearsal technique, basically to go into the studio, which was, you know. We we had that shit memorized forward, backward, uh, without vocals, you know, and for me, and, and just, and also from a psychological perspective, there are several phases of automaticity that you go through for procedural memory. And I, I thought for us, especially playing live, having gone through our preparation for recording that uh, it, it became, I, I'm, I can only speak for me, but I'm guessing for the three of you as well, that, that each of the songs became, uh, became automatic, which actually... God. The the technical term for that is being able to play it with your dick. I'm just saying that that's what they. <laughs> I was in a, I was in another uh, cover band, and that's what the dude would say. He'd be like, "I can play that with my dick," and, was, and wow. that was that's what he was talking about. Is like it was so right. automatic, right? So wow, wow. So, I don't Autom know if that's gonna make it in a journal or not, but automatic dick. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> but but it that, auto that, auto mad dick <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's an album name right there I don't have dick. uh but but it, it it allowed at least for me it allowed for a certain amount of creative freedom if we were playing live because my who is gonna stop you for yeah, starters yeah yeah <laughs> uh, only my bladder but uh but but having that knowing that shit backward and forward you know, I think gives you some of that freedom to to noodle around and you know where you are in the song, uh, whether it's vocally, bass, guitar, drums, whatever. Uh, if you know where you are at all times in that song, you know, automatically, and you can, you know, what if you drop a pick, break a string, drop a stick, whatever, uh, you're able to to pick that up without losing a beat and also, you know, uh, deviate from that a little bit. Um, anyway, I don't know. I, no, I, I, I am, uh, I totally agree with you, Scott. <laughs> Automaticity grants you, well, in order to get there, you have to practice your ass off. I mean, it, <laughs> lots of people talk about whatever the 10,000 hours it takes to be an expert or whatever. <laughs> Whatever it takes for whoever. There are people that just master things quick. There are others that will take their lifetime to master something. But regardless, that once you achieve a degree of that automaticity, then you have freedom to do so many other things, right? And uh, for me, um, it's particularly singing. So I don't have to worry about rhythmic things that are happening with my hands. Damn it when it's already Sorry. going on, right? And that being automatic with the other part of it means that 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 the stuff that needs to happen, like locking in with your drummer and really uh, hammering the one, if that's what needs to happen in that particular song or measure, I don't have to worry about the, the technical components associated with doing it. And I can still sing or talk or move around or do other shit that that will add to whatever it is that I'm doing. So, yeah, I totally agree with you that the, the, the benefit of that, <laughs> that um, uh, incessant <laughs> practicing that we did was, was that, yeah. And, and just to give uh, anybody who actually listens to this a little background, uh, we were in a... Uh, storage garage in Energy, Illinois, 
in the heat of uh, Southern Illinois summer. And I've lived in Houston and it's not that much different. No shit. Um, yeah. And uh, we just fucking, we're going to do this song 30 times without vocals. So we all know where we are every time. And we would just do that and just pound it out, pound it out. And you know, I and and that and and I, we can cover this later, but it did lead to some good things besides automaticity. We were able to go into Kramer's studio and knock out like four nice. songs, basic tracks immediately, which gave us the <laughs> idiocy to go, oh, let's do some more. Let's do let's do some more songs uh so you can get into a little uh uh challenge there but um i just wanted to give people a little background you know we were prepared to go in the studio we <laughs> we we, we knew our shit <laughs> go ahead dave so, we weren't prepared for grant hart to come in and interrupt <laughs> our goddamn recording session <laughs> <laughs> bastard <laughs> what was he thinking we were artists at work <laughs> <laughs> thankfully I, 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 go ahead, I, I, I want to respond real just real quick before I, before it slips out of my mind which is very very easy uh, when you're scott when you were talking about knowing songs backwards and forwards forwards backwards however you phrased it do we know our songs backwards? How much fun might that be? <laughs> <laughs> How much pain do we want to inflict on our audience? Why didn't we do that? We should have done that. We can play well, this we, backwards we or forwards. Can. It's exactly it's like the same. We suffer for our art, and now it's your turn kind of thing, you know? <laughs> that sounds like the kind of moronic shit that we would have done, Dave. So I'm just saying I'm surprised that we didn't do that. We probably have without knowing it. <laughs> it, it you're probably correct about that, Roger, <laughs> in some cases. If I... If I sit down and give a seriously hard listen to all of it I'll probably I, there's there's got to be an instance or two in there somewhere so we had a song called fearful <laughs> symmetry it would be beautiful if that's one so <laughs> so so Roger, uh, yeah that that's good it, so, that's it, fun is there a song roger you know you kind of to represent your approach to the creative process that we did that kind of uh, well, I, I'm going to add a little bit. I was talking about a unique perspective that I gained from being in the cover band, right? Yeah, but my yeah. perspective in Crank was uh, that the bass was equally a foundational instrument as much as a melodic instrument. So <laughs> that was my perspective. Whether or not I was able to actually deliver on that all the time, no. But I always was thinking about that, like the joke about a bass player. There's lots of jokes about bass players. I think there's more jokes about bass players than guitar players, drummers, and and lead players and vocalists combined. Because you're so funny. And rightfully, you know, <laughs> rightfully so, you know. Uh, but um, the joke always is that the bass player is, you know, the third best guitar player in the band or whatever, right? You know. And in this case, it was true. But no. besides that, besides that, I I always wanted to say, okay, fuck it, I'm I. There needs to be something happening here, and it needs to be more than just hitting a quarter note on one, two, three, four, right? And probably there were times that it would have been better if that's all I would have done. But the long and short was my yeah, that's approach. That's my job. My approach. That's always, my job. <laughs> <laughs> to tell me that Roger had been better if you had just played simple shit. No, uh, for me to actually do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that uh, that definitely influenced where Crank went direction wise when we came to actual music the 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 creation of whatever song we were working on is that it was we are always looking for that thing and sometimes i know ralph would i'm going to say this word you're going to cringe we we're looking for that tension right <laughs> fish used to say that all the time when we played together that that this tension is here we're like well can we just have a song without tension it would be really good if we could do that right <laughs> uh but 
But yeah, there was always that thing what we were looking for that made it made it our own, right? And sometimes we went to great lengths to do it, and other times it was just natural. And so that was my approach. That the, I was gonna lock in to do the the foundational bass stuff that needs to happen. The the whole sound pyramid, right? You know, the bass and drums need to be down here, filling that that bottom end, uh, so that the rest of the stuff that needs to happen can happen. And I was definitely committed to doing that. And I think Ralph and I locked in great. Um, and then uh, every now and again, when there was an opportunity, something, some little, some little thing that I could throw in there, or some extra tonal thing, or, or whatever it might be, and not just a single note, but maybe a two or three stop. Uh, you know, uh, if there's a chord structure or something that I could add while we were doing something. Uh, staring, if you want to go back old school, would be a good example of that. Every step of that song, which had, has essentially three or four parts to it, every step of it, the bass is doing something where there's a multiple stop or there is a chord that happens or a run that could happen that wouldn't necessarily have to be there, but is there in the hopefully right spot. So I'm going to add that to my list. That would be one to listen nice. to. So you nice. can listen to some of that kind of bass work. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's fucking awesome, man. Um all right, Davey. <laughs> okay, here we go. Yeah. Get out that yellow what do you notebook. Wanna know? I wanna it's, know it's... how how you approach that this shit, you know, as far as you and I've worked uh among the four of us, you and I've collaborated the longest, probably yes. forty years. Yes, and, definitely. Yeah, uh, one of the things that I love about Dave is, uh, you know, I'll I'll put some. Because he used there. to be good. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if you're referring to me or you, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, it's referring to me. Absolutely. <laughs> but, he but, used to be good, but now he's bad. But but one of the things I love is <laughs> I you 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 would read my mind and one of the things you you mentioned uh long ago we were talking about songwriting and you uh referred to yourself as you know the, the great enhancer and I loved that. I was like I have uh, on my notepad I have a collaborator. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, and <laughs> you you just locked into whatever I was doing and I, and there were there were occasions where um, oh, I can't think of which song it is. I'll think of it. But there was like one where you, you were just you were so different than other guitar players. You're like, no, that song does not need a solo. That should not have a solo. Which oh is wow! So, which what is song? So, was, what the hell song was that? <laughs> I've got. I, I'll, I I will I will try to remember. Maybe that was just me being lazy. I guess maybe <laughs> like I don't want to do a solo. Fuck <laughs> this shit. I thought that was a blue earth that that because I just told somebody that story. <laughs> <laughs> probably Ralph. Probably. But but you know for the most part you know I would I would try to write something for 138 or whatever and and uh you oh you were god in... man three versions of that band yeah, that's, and... that's a, a whole lot of material right yeah, there and, and you were in a bunch of stuff besides that but yeah so yeah point... yeah i was in college playing freaking yeah. classical guitar yeah trying, trying to get a goddamn graduate you know just yeah <laughs> so so by the time you know we we're working on material for crank what what you know what was your process for like you know i don't know i don't i don't always remember if roger and i if we came up with a song idea if we would go i don't oh, remember and, oh and this is where dave does a solo <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah usually the part that we came up with is about 18 seconds and we'd say then dave's going to do this <laughs> that fill in the remaining You're remainder of the four minutes that's an exaggeration, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know, man. Um, let me look at my notes. Uh, I already said collaborator. So I feel like I've just was adding. So just during adding things in, um, song structure, D 
details guy for whatever that's worth. And that, that would apply to pretty much any, any song. Um, guitar parts, not so much adding solos, adding layers. Um, and the song I actually wrote down a reference to a song, and that would be Victor No Longer. Uh, followed by boring when the guitars are doing the same shit. <laughs> exactly. So, if, if, if both that, guitars are doing the same thing, then one of them isn't necessary. So exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes. So you go victim no longer or and so if you'd go high i'd go low and then when you were going low i'd go yeah yeah that kind of shit that's 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 pretty much what uh yeah, yeah just add layers add layers and uh make it not samey somehow well and actually and, uh, another another example if you will um and it wasn't a guitar part um uh, for the song on my way you and you and richard uh you especially were like okay here's what needs to happen on the strings uh and on my way uh, which were there were no uh strings <laughs> no 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 Th there were digitally if you remember i think i played them <laughs> yeah exactly. yeah yeah and richard was doing a little vibrato with them and and i was i was um i i, I enjoyed it i just sat back in the chair and watched you and richard kind of do your magic uh oh well yeah. his his playing in the in in the middle of a uh, locked window is just out of this world <laughs> great <laughs> yeah and, and it, it kind of goes to your point of adding layers uh it was a he he added a great layer um but but like i was saying with on my way you know you added a lay it wasn't a guitar layer it was a different layer it was a string layer uh that, and it was and it was extremely simple but hey but it, simple's it, okay yeah yeah <laughs> when it fits yeah yeah I, I am not a keyboard player um i i know just enough because i went through you know i went through school and that's kind of minimalistic stuff but uh then when you got a kid <laughs> like anthony <laughs> wow <laughs> so we're like okay i quit <laughs> well and that, that take over that that whole i want to we might have to have a part three roger <laughs> yeah that's all right because, <laughs> i'm watching the clock because i want to talk about how we how we teach music and how you know i want to talk about uh whiplash and tar oh and shit stuff like that <laughs> So we'll we'll go come back to that, but because I think that's really important and interesting. Um, but Dave, if there's is there a song, a crank song that kind of exemplifies your approach to uh, how you uh, your perspective on 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 a guitar part or another part? Ah. <laughs> Wow, there's so much material to uh, sift through in my head really quickly. Um, just flat out, uh, not nothing fancy, just flat out, holy shit, this song just fucking bangs it. Uh, lock the window would be one. Cool. That's nothing difficult about it, really. <laughs> yeah, uh, but that one that's a song where like we, we were both banging and just bashing bashing guitars. And uh, so that was a, a, a space where it'd be like, 
la layers. I'm like, okay, you're, we're all down here. Now I'm going up there. Yeah. So, and, and it worked out really well. Yeah. So, Scott, can we let's turn the question back to you then? If you can discuss your process, your approach, the things that you considered when you were writing, playing, whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things, and I don't know, Roger, if this is the same for you, but I don't, I don't have a formula. I don't, um, sometimes I'll have some lyrics in my head and then I'll write some music. Sometimes I'll have some music and I will see what, what fits on top of that, uh, lyrically. Sometimes I'll have music, and this has happened a couple occasions where I've had a, a just a a riff for a year in my head and, and nothing else, <laughs> and then something else will come of that. Yeah. And um, you know, it's just bits and pieces you keep in your scrapbook, base your mental scrapbook. But and, and part of the 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 thing about creativity is. You know, you touched on it, Roger. You know, you and Ralph would be uh, uh, jamming on something, uh, and there there are a couple songs that um, "Windows of Life." Uh, uh, Ralph right. and Roger, if I remember it correctly, were were just. You know, these two notes and a little simple drum beat down in Dave's basement. I came in and, you know, it, it, re it really struck me. And then I wrote some lyrics to it. And it's a very simple song. But <laughs> we get we get fucking into it. We really fucking we, we can brutal. Dude. It, it, it's <laughs> straight up brutal it's a brutal song in i don't i don't know you know if you ever listen to the lyrics i write or anything but but there there are some songs i write that uh you know reach back to my past and stuff and that was that happened to be one of them and uh that it was inspired by you know what what ralph and roger was doing is really important i think in that that what going back to what dave said that collaboration uh and that's what that's what built the song <clears throat> another and and roger mentioned staring kind of the same thing uh, i think ralph and roger if i'm not mistaken were just doing the they were they were playing bass and drums and we took off from that and and wrote that um but there there was another one uh uh eyes like mine um i had i had it was one of those things where you're plunking around on guitar at home you're trying to write shit or just play around and i came up with it but it was missing something and and i brought it to rehearsal and uh uh roger uh you know you were just like oh yeah for the break let's just go d to f da, 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 da. and that added so much to the song i mean it was just a really great break and actually the i think the first solo dave has is over that d to f break later in the song and, and that's the song i yes. want to I want to play that song. That's a great song. Um, uh, again, you know, it's it's that was that was that song. Just the, occasionally, as a songwriter, you get a magic moment where the you're writing the music and the lyrics just kind of are right there. It, it, that was a, yes, that that that's a great example of that. I mean, it's just really just kind of all chill. <laughs> I, I would definitely concur with you, Scott, that there are there's not a set pattern that I would follow for song creation or songwriting. And looking back, so much of Crank's 
material and then the other stuff that I've done. But so much of Crank's material was uh, one of us would have a kernel of an idea that was there. And it might be Dave noodling on something, or it might have been something that you brought in, or something that I brought in, or something that Ralph brought in. Hey, we should try doing something like this, or this, or Ralph might be playing something, and we just start to create something right then. Or have something that we had in the back of our brains that was like, oh, that will go with that, and then start playing it, or whatever. So there was always one of us that was bringing something to the table. And honestly, I think we all were very comfortable with saying, hey, that's your baby, so let's. what can we do to make that grow up right and that was awesome um but then there were other times where shit was just fully formed like it just popped out of your brain you know uh and uh, there you are zeus there's your new demigod born in front of you already performed throwing <laughs> lightning bolts and it's like okay well then we're good with that too uh i thought i, I always thought that we handled that very well everybody was very supportive of what that process was but it was a very different process all the way around i'm like mm. there was never a set method that we followed like i i bet you'd agree with me like there's sometimes where the lyrics came first there's sometimes the melody came first there's sometimes where not even your guitar part but the other guitar part came first uh or whatever it might be and it's definitely was that way with me too where where sometimes it was like that and sometimes it was like Think about the song Severed Heart. Um, in terms of song creation, there are three distinct parts. And those three distinct parts came from Scott, Dave, and, and, and me in terms of the musical component. And then Ralph found ways to make all of them kind of weave together. And, Sorry, and help, Ralph. <laughs> help, helped make, those song, help make that song a song. But if you listen to that, maybe we'll play that later. But if you listen to it, you can hear, oh, that's a distinct part that's different than what we did before. Who did that one? And you might be able to figure out who did what. But uh, uh, generally, the, the more musically complex was Dave, and the squirrelier one was mine, and, and the, the driving <laughs> cool one was Scott's. <laughs> I was going yeah, to say, listens to wait, listen. Say that again, Dave. My couldn't, part. couldn't hear King, you, Dave. Listening to too much King Crimson at the time. <laughs> yes, no doubt. Something yeah. like that. Uh, I, I, but that particular song, if if we left it to people to figure it out, would they think that I was just like screaming at first, just like? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what they probably think is like, damn, he's angry all the time. That was practice for us. Scott would come in and be like, hi, everybody. <laughs> hi, Scott. How are you doing? Fine. <laughs> I got the feel. <laughs> makes makes I me. I don't know what's real. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, I, I always like to go back to the, uh, the, the fact that uh, Bruce Dickinson of Iron Maiden is an airline with highly trained airline pilot yeah. is like we're gonna land yeah, we're, we're gonna yeah. land <laughs> that's how he announces this shit <laughs> and Landing so play. <laughs> in uh in the band the dna vibrators here's an example that you guys are all aware of and that is that dave uh would be at home and recording something and he would post it up to our our chat and so he was like doing this one thing that since we were doing like <laughs> sound uh, our our mouth sounds for guitars, he's like going, "Hey guys, I've been I've been I cranked it up to ten and did this." He's like, da 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 da. I don't know if you remember that one. It just rolled and kept rolling and kept going down chromatically. Well, wait, wait, you're talking about talking about uh, all good people. Yeah, we're talking about what happened yeah. to what became good yeah. people. No, so it's like so absolutely the laziest goddamn thing but it sounded cool yeah and the, but the the point is that the, Dave was like here's this thing and we're like I was like oh dude that's cool we need to do something with it uh, but just on its own it was just that thing uh, so we had to add some stuff to it and so he when he and I sat down and we had an idea that we needed to do something but we didn't know what it was and so we had to bang ideas around until something started to fit and that's where both of us were able to kind of feed off. Nobody had a, an agenda other than let's do something with this. And so the final product, I may play that one. The final product is a fully formed song. It has a pretty cool, couple pretty cool elements. Thanks to you, fully formed thanks to you, Raj. 
I was, <laughs> but only only because the process is allowed to be facilitated, right? Like well, that's it, true. It I mean, have... we did we did agree there needs to be a pause in there somewhere. Yeah, there's just no way to make a song of this just, just walking all the way down from well, now, way there, up high. There you go. That's from something way up that... high to the bottom. We absolutely would have liked to have done, but we realized early on that people would get really annoyed with that shit really oh, yeah. quickly. They're probably getting annoyed with it anyway. But yeah, <laughs> so it's interesting that all those hey, those are so. all elements of the creative process, right, Scott? So yeah, yeah, and 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 uh, you know, kind of winding up this line of this line of question. Uh, one of the things that I have talked about in uh, with with positions that I've held and job interviews that I've had, oftentimes the last question is, "Oh, is there anything else you want us you want us to know, or you want to tell us about yourself?" And I say, "Yes, actually, I was in a band, and uh, one of the things like I five, was, yeah, yeah." <laughs> And one of the things I learned from being in those bands is that, you know, bring an idea and let let the let the people do what they do best. Don't tell them what to do. Let them let them do their thing. And it's worked for me. <laughs> it's it's I think it's a good approach to uh music i think it's a good approach to um you know teams in general everybody's got their expertise bring bring an idea and it's like you know hey you're an expert in this area you do that you do this you do that and let's see what happens nice and i think that's uh i don't know if i would have I learned that in another environment other than being in a band. But, uh, well, there's very few other, like, I mean, this wasn't our job, but it, but it was a, an element of our uh, aspirational profession at that time, right? And very yeah. few jobs or professions that you get into require, I mean, Oftentimes you're working with somebody else or you're part of a team, but at the end of the day, you can go home and say, that guy's ideas are bullshit and I'm not going to incorporate them into anything that I do. Well, you just can't do that in a band. You can't just yeah. discount somebody's position. And if you do, it is to the detriment of the whole thing. And, and then what are you doing it for, right? So it's one of those few things where you absolutely must be locked in to what am I doing that's contributing? How am what I, how is what I'm doing making the other guys sound better? How are what they doing is allowing me to do the things that I want to do? And is that really the best thing for me to do? And so you have to be constantly critical of your own production and not in a negative way but just in that creative way if it's not if it's not adding what needs to be added whether it's a spoken goal or not then then you you have to have that that self-awareness to go i better do something different then right and when it's working man it's 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 pretty amazing right yeah it makes it worth it that's for sure yeah. That's a really excellent, excellent observation, Raj. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that goes all the way back to, you know, Crank was a band that was born out of a discussion <laughs> before yeah. people yeah. ever went into a room. And so, and, and where we started and where we ended up, the music changed some and our approach to writing and creating changed some, but there was a um, an overt commitment to this is what we're going to try to do. And I mean, in, in some ways you, you, you know, you create a box that that's going to happen in, but that box was pliable and movable. Um, yeah. But the, the commitment to collaboration and what we wanted to do, you know, I've played in a lot of bands since, since then, and I've never played in a band that had that same vision 
and commitment to collaboration and give and take and everybody rowing in the same direction. Um, <laughs> yeah. Even, you know, up, up, upstream part of the way, but that's, um, I mean, that was a unique thing about, about what we were able to do and create and in in that moment in time. It's that joke, the Bill Hartley's thing about, about um, the Metro when he went to the different rooms and, it's, and it was like, well, yeah, we're not here to fuck around. We're here to like fucking hurt somebody. <laughs> so, so if that's not what, you know, it's like the scene from, um, Scarface. I mean, if you're looking for the room where somebody's being chainsawed in the shower, well, you've come to the right fucking place. <laughs> but if that's not what you're after, you know, then, yeah. then find another room. <laughs> the Steelers wheel. <laughs> As yeah, an yeah. example, yeah. I'm going to cut the ear off the cuff. You know, but, yeah. but <clears throat> you know, Ralph, what you're you're saying is, and this is the thing that I I. You know, we all have work relationships, personal relationships, uh, all that stuff. And one of the things, the, the, Crank was a model for me, actually, because we because we did that. We sat down and we we're like, okay, is this a hobby? Is this something we're going to do for real? Because we all got lives and we need, we all have limited financial resources and we need to figure out what this is going to fucking be and that's what we need to framework and we can go out from there and that's what we did and um that kind of set the tone for me for uh a lot of my relationships after that it was like you know what what is this what is this is this a fucking uh uh a hobby is this are we you know, if I'm going to play volleyball, is this, are we going to do this once a week or, you know, what the fuck is going on here? I've driven a lot of people crazy <laughs> based on <laughs> my, 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 uh, my, my crank basic training. So, um, um, uh, Hey, I like that crank basic training. We could, we should could be sell whole, that. that. We should yeah, sell that's, that's in our retirement. We can do that. We can do that. Yeah. If it well, I'm not retiring anytime soon. But <laughs> uh, guys, I'm looking at my clock. We've got a minute left on this particular segment, so I'm going to go ahead and let's let's just pause our our thoughts, and then maybe when we get back, we can play some music and talk about some of the songs that we referenced. Would That's that be cool? Yeah. That yeah. sounds cool. I think we're all probably ready for a break of some sort. Okay, so I'm going to uh, you know. I'm going to hit the uh, end on this meeting, and then I'll see you guys back in just a few moments. Same link, okay? All right. Cool. Ready. Thanks.